This week on The Gadget Show Web TV, John's looking at the Rock laptop, and I'll be showing you how to upgrade the hard drive in your PlayStation 3, plus the latest in gadget tech news. Hello and welcome to The Gadget Show Web TV. I'm Dion South and as you can see, this week I'm all on my own. And that's because John is currently filming The Gadget Show's Road Trip Special, which will be hitting your screens on Friday, January 30th at 8pm on 5. It's going to be really awesome, so make sure you don't miss it. Later, I'll be showing you how to upgrade the hard drive in your PlayStation 3. But first, here's John with the first look at the new Rock laptop. I've always held rock computers in awe. Laptops so big and powerful they could be desktops, promising superb multimedia and games performance if your lap's up to the weight. So when I got hold of one for the first time, this new Extreme 780, it was a bit like driving a Ferrari for the first time. Would it live up to all the expectations? Well, the specs are certainly impressive enough. There's lots of choices to make, but this one's towards the top end of the range. It's got Intel's latest Core 2 Duo processor, the T9600, running at 2 GHz, and Nvidia's latest graphics card, the new 9800M GTX 1 GB, no less. It's got a 320 GB hard drive and it's got 4 GB of RAM. Although, as this version is running uh, the 32 bit version of Windows Vista in home premium form, the last GB of that is wasted. It's got an impressive 17 inch screen though with a resolution of 1900 by 1200 pixels and it's got a built-in blu-ray drive and fingerprint reader i was slightly disappointed though to discover the machine's actually a bit of badge engineering it's made by a taiwanese company called clevo it's their m570 tu that i managed to get over this and concentrate on the good points of the package, like the uh, excellent keyboard with uh, a separate number keypad, like the uh, way the USB sockets are well spaced for when you want to add things, like the just about large enough trackpad, which has a scrolling function on the right hand side. And there are lots and lots of ports, DVI, HDMI, mini firewire, and although there's a bit of fan noise, it's not too noisy for something so powerful. And as soon as you set it to do anything challenging, you realise the benefits of all that power. You can easily play back footage from the latest AVC HD camcorders, and you can edit it easily as well in the latest editing software. It'll play the gamer's classic test game of choice, Crisis, smoothly, although only at its medium, not its highest quality settings, though that'll still mean it should play virtually all other games smoothly at their full settings. So there are some limitations to what even an extreme laptop will do. You'll have to decide for yourself whether heavyweight, portability and freedom is worth it over the upgradability and ultimate performance of an extreme desktop alternative. And buying a huge, powerful gaming laptop isn't without its compromises. One of the most significant ones is on battery life. I found I only got an hour and a half under relatively light usage watching a programme on BBC iPlayer at near maximum brightness. Playing games, it gets worse. It's not something for long flights then. Also, weight, as mentioned previously, is an issue. It's nearly five kilos. And there were some problems I didn't expect. The sound quality was very disappointing, in particular its lack of volume, both through the built-in speakers and, even more inexplicably, through the headphone socket. Um, the card reader was a bit of a poor show. I couldn't fit the cards in so they were flush, they sort of stuck out. And the Blu-ray player, bizarrely, didn't come with any Blu-ray playing software, which is a bit of a poor show when you've paid a couple of grand for a laptop. Those irritations aside, though, it's a very impressive machine. Now it's time for the news. And first up is a company called Powermat, who revealed a series of charging mats at CES earlier this year. Now, the technology uses the principle of magnetic induction to transmit power through the mat and onto gadgets placed onto it. So the idea is that you plug in the power mat 
and position your gadgets into receiver type sleeves and cases that are positioned on the mat and then it will charge your gadget simultaneously at the same speed as if they'd been plugged into a separate charger. Now the advantage of this is it reduces cable clutter and frees up more of your power sockets while still charging multiple devices. There are five different mats to choose from as well as a variety of receiver sleeves and cases for your gadgets and products will start shipping throughout 2009 although there's no word yet on pricing. Also at CES, Sharp have revealed a new line of Aquos televisions with built-in Blu-ray players. Key features include an advanced Superview anti-reflective screen, four HDMI ports on the larger screen sizes, and the Aquos televisions will be available in sizes from 32 to 52 inch screens. Great for those of you wanting to minimalize bulk in the living room, and the full range will be available in the US from February. But there's no news yet on pricing or when they'll be available in the UK. JVC have also revealed that they'll be bringing out a television with built-in Blu-ray player in June. The 42-inch LCD includes a 1920 by 1080 resolution and incorporates JVC's new picture improvement technology as well as having a range of connections. Again, no word yet on pricing or UK availability, but we'll keep you posted. Right, now it's time for one of my how-tos, and this week it's all about upgrading the hard drive on your PlayStation 3. The PS3 is one of the hottest games consoles around. It's an awesome Blu-ray player and you can get accessories like Play TV for recording your favourite TV shows. If you use yours on a regular basis to save game data, download high definition trailers and game demos, then it won't be long before your hard drive starts filling up. The PS3 comes with a standard 80GB hard drive installed, but what do you do when it's full? Well don't worry, you don't have to delete a thing, just upgrade your hard drive to one with more space. So here's the Gadget Show's guide for upgrading your PlayStation 3's hard drive. Firstly, to upgrade, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver like this and an external hard drive if you want to back up the data currently saved on your PS3's hard drive, like your videos, your music and your saved game data. And obviously, you'll need a new hard drive for your PlayStation 3. The PS3 is compatible with just about any 2.5-inch SATA notebook hard disk. Both 5,400 and 7,200 RPM drives should work fine, but the physical size of the hard disk is important because it has to fit the PS3's 2.5-inch drive tray, so make sure you buy the correct model. For example, the Seagate models are compatible. The PS3 comes with an 80GB hard drive, so I'd recommend getting at least a 120, 160 or even 250GB replacement. Once you have your upgrade drive, the next step is to back up the data saved on your current PlayStation 3 hard drive. Now you can skip this step if you're not too fussed about your music, video and saved game data, but I've got a feeling most of you are going to want to save this information so you don't have to start from scratch again when it comes to your favourite games. Luckily, the PS3 comes with a built-in backup utility and will allow you to copy the information saved on your internal hard drive to an external one like this. So all you need to do is plug in your hard drive, go to the PS3 system settings and then select backup utility. You can now choose to copy your entire hard drive or just select what you want to keep. Now you've backed up your old hard drive, it's time to replace it. So you need to make sure your PlayStation 3 is turned off and disconnected. And then you need to look for the removable cover on the underside of the PlayStation 3 where your hard drive lives. Remove the black cover and you'll see a blue screw that you'll need to remove. You'll see this little metal hook. If you just pull it towards you, then you need to give it a shove to the right and that will free your hard drive. Now to remove it from the metal frame, there are four screws that you need to remove. Once you've removed the screws, your old hard drive should just slide out of the metal frame and you need to replace it with your new hard drive. And then to secure that into place, you need to put the screws back in. Now once the new hard drive is secure in the metal frame, it's time to put it back into the PlayStation 3. You need to push it firmly to the left and it'll click into place. And you just need to put the blue screw back. Now you just need to put the black cover back on. Now you're ready to plug the PlayStation 3 back in and turn it on. Now that your new hard drive's installed, you just need to boot up your PlayStation 3 and follow the on-screen instructions on how to format and set it up. And once you've booted up, you can plug in your external hard drive and transfer all that saved game data back onto the new system. So now you should have plenty of room to fill up your new hard drive with an endless number of game demos and TV shows. 
unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week, but here's what's coming up in next week's show. John will be bringing you a review of the latest Prada mobile phone. And I'll be showing you how to set up your very own internet radio station.